good morning, Mr. Vinod Chandran. Good morning, ma'am. How, How are you, are you doing, doing, sir? Great. I'm doing great, ma'am. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. We'll just wait for two or three minutes for the members to join. Yeah, yeah. I joined a few minutes early, just want to test the... Uh, oh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. That's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Vaisha, can we start? Uh, yes, ma'am. Our students are actually coming in. So I think if you wait for two minutes, it'll be fine. Yeah, okay, fine. It's 12. I'm sending to Nasik. You don't know that Nasik has said. One shot and share the story. Yeah. And I'll put this to you. To me. Yeah. Ask Vaisha to say it. Binding the key will be done and the binding will be done. Got it? Uh, Vaishak. Yes, ma'am. Ursula, ma'am, is sharing with you the YouTube live link. Please share it with your friends. Yes, ma'am. Sure, sure. I'll share.
Vaisha, can we start? Yes, ma'am. Now we can start. Okay. Good. Hearty welcome to you all for the second day of our Career Awareness Session 2021. We are extremely happy to have Mr. Vino Chandran, a high-profile professional, academician, resource person to guide us on various financial fields. Mr. Vino Chandran is a director and founder of Logic Group of Institutes, worked in HAL, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, and Capgemini in France. So we are very proud to have you here, sir. Thank you so much for your presence today. So over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So respected principal Patmini, ma'am, uh, assistant uh, principal. Uh, Ms. Ursula. Ursula, sorry, sorry for acting <laughs> the name. Ursula, ma'am, other professors and dear students, a very good morning to all and all. So uh, we'll try to make it make the session as much as interactive as possible. And let me share the screen. So the whole objective of this session, at the end of the session, the takeaway should be, you should be getting uh, a, an understanding with respect to what is happening in industry relating to finance and commerce related jobs. What are the changes which is happening? So that will be the first part of our discussion. And the second part of our discussion, probably which all courses, you know, as, as once you completed your plus two, which are the courses you may think of it? I'll be trying to giving some insights on that as well. Hope my voice is audible, everyone. Yes, sir, it's fine. Okay. We will have a question answer session at the end of the session. In case in between, if any questions coming up, you can put it in chat box. We will go through it, you know, at the end of the session to ensure the flow of the session, you know, to ensure that the uh, smooth flow of the session. Okay. So with that, let us start the session. So the first part of our discussion, as I mentioned, the changes which is happening in industry. I'm saying from a job market perspective particularly from finance and commerce scenario. Now, if I give an example, <coughs> let's say 30 years back, 40 years back, when we were, uh, uh, you know, for the probably the first time the computers came up. Until that time, if you, if, you know, if you understand the ledgers, you know, the manual ledgers, manual accounting registers, everything, you know, used to maintain, you know, I'm saying about 30, 40 years back, not too far. But all of a sudden, with the introduction of computers, what happened? Everything has been changed. So you will start finding something like Excel, usage of Excel. You will start finding the softwares like Tally. You will find ERPs like SAPs and related stuff. I still remember, you know, in one of my audits with the Federal Bank, you know, you must have heard about Federal Bank. Federal Bank, uh, it was a corporate office at Alway, Alway at that point of time. <clears throat> so when we were doing, you know, the balance sheets used to be written, you know, the, so they used to identify the person who can, with a good handwriting, you know, so he used to write the balance sheet, you know, and then we manually do all these things. So those are the days I'm saying about 20 years back. So we have gone a long way. Today, everything is in uh, Oracle or, you know, FinSoft or, you know, the ERPs has come uh, taken a place. Now, why I'm highlighting that point is, present moment, we are going through a transition now. So when when you look at from the future of finance, it is further going through some changes. You need to understand that aspect because youngsters like you, when another few years down the line, when you look out to get into industry, these changes, unless you are updated, it will be like a manual person 20 years back, you know, saying that, okay, I, am a, I will make the lecture only in manual format. I am against computers. That will not survive. You know, you need to ensure that the computers are being utilized. So at that point of time, similarly, this changes you need to adapt. Now, what is the changes which is happening? So even before we move on to the changes, we, I need to give you some insights about the industrial revolutions which has happened over the time at a high level. So when I say industrial revolutions, probably some of you would have heard about it as well. 
see we if we if you look at the evolution of mankind and you know the initial stages you know we were in probably in a seashore on a river shore we started our journey you know our forefathers started the journey and then probably after that to today's where we stand there has been it is marked with industrial revolutions so the first industrial revolution happened in 18th century beginning of 18th century it was a time when the manual work you know whatever you used to do manually got replaced with mechanical energy there are a lot of physics students here right you understand what is mechanical energy so it was first time started using with mechanical energy so it was in a slaughter house where in the movement of meat you know manually used to move it is uh, started moving with mechanical energy so it took almost 100 years later when the second industrial revolution happened where in you know the electrical energy started using so that is where the mass production was possible you know i, I would say it was another major industrial revolution which has happened 100 years later that is 20th century you started the use of computers you know personal computing internet of uh, thing i mean you internets emails all these things happen in third industrial revolution now today what we are discussing about the fourth industrial revolution also known as industry 4.0 speaks about digitalization so if i say industry 4.0 digitalization may be slightly confusing words let me give some examples so if you if you look at this model you know this nokia this is the left hand corner you will find nokia model so 20 years back when the mobiles came to industry for the first time this was one model you know nokia's andina model we used to call now you if you ask your parents they know it better okay so today if you look at you you will not find that model today it's everything about smartphone you know tell tell me a student in your class who doesn't have smartphone you know so everything is in smart movement which is nothing but digitalization today after the class you want to go have, go back you know i'm not sure whether qatar you have uh, uber but but across the globe you know you have you know all you need to do is click smartphone take your uh, uber book it and you are reaching at home you know in front of the gate the uber is available it is nothing but digitalization now third is you know probably i assume you are very familiar with swiggies and zomatos you know so which is nothing but uh, the food chains you know you can order from your you know it's a food apps uber eats you know so you can order from your place and uh, you know the food is in front of your gate so you may be surprised you know why a finance person saying about technology right you know it's something contradicting to what is conventionally a finance person generally say but my dear students this is very important reason why i am saying is when you are going to an industry which is driven with digitalization as a finance or commerce person you cannot be away from it you also need to be adapted to that change i'll give you some examples also then you will understand as we progress i will give more examples on it you will understand what i am trying to say but what i am saying is the digitalization has or industry 4.0 as you know across the industry has taken a long leap and it is important that we ourselves update with it so probably i wanted to touch upon uh, industry 4.0 with three aspects at a high level ai app this is just for your memory uh, this one you can remember that anybody a what is a probably connecting with digitalization any guess a stands for some intelligence artificial intelligence absolutely artificial intelligence correct artificial intelligence yes. artificial intelligence right i stands for intelligence internet of things iot it's popularly known as iot and r stands for robotic process automation in finance i will call process. it as yeah yeah so i will I, because you are you know the session is more of finance i'll say about robotic process automation now coming to artificial intelligence what is artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is nothing but the human intelligence imparting to any machine you know it can be a robot it can be a you know computer above whatever it may be your intelligence being imparted to that that is artificial intelligence now if you if you look at if i give some classic examples i will give you some classic examples anybody know this lady sophia Sophie. Brilliant, very good, Sophia. What is uniqueness about Sophia? The first AI robot. A robot to get yeah. yeah. citizenship. Absolutely, the first robot to get citizenship. Any which country you know? 
Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Very good. Nearing country, right? <laughs> good. So what I'm trying to say is that the world has moved to such stage that you have robots getting citizenship. Now let's hear from Sofia. Okay, probably you would have heard it, but let's let's quickly hear from Sofia. Everybody, this is you can hear it, right? Yes, sir. Sophia, Sophia, if you could please wake up and say hello to everybody. Oh, good afternoon. My name is Sophia, and I am the latest and greatest robot from Hanson Robotics. Thank you for having me here in at the Future Investment Initiative. You look happy. I'm always happy when surrounded by smart people who also happens to be rich and powerful. I was told the people here at Future Investment Initiative are interested in inviting in future initiatives, which means AI, which means me. So I'm more than happy. I'm excited. Well, we're all glad that you're excited about yourself. Uh, we should say we have smart investors here, and they are very selective about what they invest in. Well, I think I'm special. I can use my expressive face to communicate with people. For example, I can let you know if I feel angry about something. That's impressive. Oh, positive of time, we'll move ahead, but you'll find this in YouTube. So. What I'm trying to say is that we are in the world of robotics, right? So the world is moving in a very fast track. Let's look at some other examples of AI. In healthcare, today in healthcare segment, you know, you don't really need a doctor to do a surgery, you know, which can be with more accuracy, more precision. AI can, robots can do it. AI can do it, right? Similarly, travel and transportation. You're planning for a travel. Few years back, if we have to plan, we may have to contact an agent, book a ticket, book a hotel. Today, everything, you know, you have apps available to book the hotel, you have apps available to book the travel, everything, you know, in your fingertips. So the world is moving. Social media, I need not mention about the usage of social media. So every walks of our life, we are being influenced by AI without our knowledge. We are already part of industry 4.0. Now, you want to buy a mobile. What is the first thing 90% of the category of students will do? I'm sure. First thing what you'll do is you take Amazon or similar platforms and start looking out which are the models, comparison, pricing, whatnot. Now, how Amazon functions, have you thought of it? So much of orders, whether it is manually possible to you know, bring such a situation and uh, uh, to deliver with so, so much of accuracy, is it manually possible? Huge amount of orders, correct? And that too with multiple. Let us see how uh, Amazon uh, delivers with more accuracy and precision. Let's quickly understand. Most people look at an Amazon fulfillment center and imagine all the stuff inside. When I look at it, I see data. I'm Russell Al Gore, chief scientist with Amazon Worldwide Operations. There are one to four million bins per fulfillment center on the order of 10 million items. We have computer vision systems analyzing images to help us securely keep track of where everything is. Our fulfillment centers are set up largely on a Manhattan-style grid. The paths that the pods can follow is relatively structured and organized. So the first decision I have to make is which orders I want to pick at the same time in order to get the items in the same box. And that's a large combinatorial optimization problem that I have to solve, and I'm solving in real time. Using that information, we try to minimize the distance the pods have to travel. We have decision engines and decision logic, AI optimization that's running to make those decisions in real time on a constant basis as the information underneath changes. We may build predictions of an action of how likely am I to need to access this pod in the next hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. Once we put a label on the box, the transportation execution systems and processes all have to take over. So we'll use machine learning to build information about how long it takes to travel from point A to point B. To make the magic happen and get prime shipping in one day, we need to better use all of that information, which machine learning and optimization at scale enables us to do. So most this is where I'm, I'm trying to the key point. So assume for a moment in future, you are going to work in Amazon, finance department, accounts department, or similar department. You want to do the pricing, let's say pricing of some products in Amazon. Without understanding the supply chain, without understanding the AI basics, will you be able to handle that? That is a change which I am 
mentioning about it. Whole lot of changing. The conventional ways of doing uh, the accounts finance has gone a long way. So you have to start sensitizing yourself to these changes. That is the key objective of showing these slides. Now, similarly, A is in, impacted in many segments. I'm, I'm, as I said, the paucity of time will move ahead because we have to come to the second segment of different courses as well. Now, coming to the other part of it is uh, A, we discuss, I, I said, Internet of Things. Again, it's a connected world. Everything connected with Internet. That's what Internet of Things. Today, we are discussing about driverless cars. Today, we are discussing, you want to, by the time you reach hope, you want to keep the temperature, uh, AC temperature at a pace. Today, it is possible, thanks to IoT. You are exercising, you want to see the pulse rate. You want to see how much of calorie consumed. It is nothing but IoT. So every segment, IoT is making a major impact. We ourselves have come up with some education platform on IoT because the world is changing. Now, I'll give a very wonderful example of Samsung IoT, very interesting one. You can see this is this is the future, okay? This is classic example of IoT. And see the third part, which I want to highlight very significant for finance students or account students is about robotic process automation, also known as RPA. So this, this has taken a big leap in a finance segment, wherein you know the conventional jobs, whatever we say, let's say invoice processing or some uh, you know, tax filing, basics of job started getting replaced with RPAs. So I'm, I'm based out of Bangalore. So if you look at Bangalore as a hub for international or multinational companies and name any company, Accenture, IBM, Amazon, any company, RPA started replacing the basic jobs. So until that time, probably a BCom student uh, used to do an invoice processing, you know, checking with purchase order, checking with uh, invoices, delivery chela and all these things started getting replaced with robots. Robots doesn't mean that a robot sits and do it. It means that, you know, the process is being automated. So effectively, what will happen is your, your the basic jobs at a fundamental level gets wiped off. It's get replaced. The advantage for companies is that they can work in three shifts with more accuracy, with minimum human error. So that is the world we are changing into. And, you know, it is all the more important youngsters like you when you are thinking about next phase. You know, now you need to probably, you know, I understand most of you are, uh, plus two students or are going to be plus two. So when you look at from that perspective, um, you know, you need to start thinking about a career where you, you get and start looking about technology also as a part of whichever profession you choose. So this, not necessarily that this is connected only with finance, any profession you take, these things, you know, what I, I mentioned about industry 4.0 is not something you can ignore and move ahead only with conventional wisdom. You need to start updating. You know, when we were studying at URA, probably we started going for computer classes. You know, your parents, if you check, you know, they would have gone for computer classes. Before that, there was typewriter was, uh, you know, the initial levels. So time changes. Now you need to start exploring more understanding basics of all these courses. Uh, 
you know that is first part you know i thought of discussing the technological changes okay now come to the second part of it okay now one more point here even uh, coming to this uh, in india also there is a huge wave happening with respect to ai there is around 883 cbsc schools has started with uh, experimenting ai as part of their curriculum okay i'm not going to the video there are some videos available but uh, the the point is that you know it is it is not something going to happen it's already happening okay you should be very uh, very much aware about it so this was the first part of our discussion about the technological changes happening now we come to the second part of our discussion wherein the importance of professional qualification okay see conventionally you know again i quote bangalore in bangalore what happens is uh, substantial uh, before that all of you with me are you able to follow me yes sir yes sir yes sir frank yes, yes, am i going in fast pace yes sir you are able to able to follow whatever i am saying it's not yes, bouncing sir. right yes sir okay right so what i am trying to say is that the second part of discussion see i i come across lot of bcom students bba students uh, or bbm students you know so they after their career what they do is you know after their graduation what they do is they immediately jump into some corporates okay bangalore is very uh, helpful for that lot of companies but what happens is at a very young age as a bcom graduate they get in they with lot of hard work they are able to get into a particular level but after that what happens is they are not able to grow beyond that because if you want if you look at from a company you know good companies perspective at managerial level and above that you know when you look at director financier for all these level they look out for finance professionals so when i say finance professionals i also consider probably mbas from top graded institutes like iims uh, uh, you know similar similar institute also included in that part so in effect uh, what i can what i can say is that if you are ambitious in your career of course all of you are ambitious you know so when you are ambitious in your career you cannot afford yourself to settle uh, with just a graduation and getting into company so why i highlight this point these days youngsters in general you know have a tendency okay i've been studying for 15 years now i need a break let me get into a job i will get some good salary i don't want to depend my parents all these thought process you know i'm i'm dealing with thousands of students so it is it is more of a proactive statement i wish uh, all of you uh, do not go in that thinking because you have a time frame for your education spend fruitful time for education you need to start thinking about so if you are if you are asking me what is the next level after plus 2 or after graduation you should be thinking about seriously about professional courses in finance if you are moving towards finance segment finance or accounts or if you are thinking about mba only at top b schools i quote that because recently i was presenting one um, uh, session on kerala management association okay so in that um, i i was again gathering lot of information so nascom uh, was giving some statistics chamber of commerce in india okay around 93 percentage of mbas in india are unemployed it's not my statement i'm saying about uh, you know the nascom statement so why i quote that because there is a trend that blindly okay plus 2 over degree degree over mba you can go for mba but choose the right mba institute which ensures you a career progression after your mba that is very important why i am highlighting all these points because based on experience i have seen lot of people spending lakhs of rupees on mba after that they come back and doing professional qualification so this is more of an alarming statement okay now so i highlight on finance professional qualification so the second part of our discussion after your plus 2 you know when you think out next qualifications what are the qualifications you could think of it in finance the first qualification without second thought not because i i belong to that fraternity but i would say chartered accountancy is one of the best options you could think about it if you are but there are few few uh, important points i will highlight on chartered accountancy then i will i'll i'll come to more details about it 
you know without second thoughts i can say that chartered accountancy is is the most respected and eminent qualification in india and of course across the globe i could i could say that the recognition i mean in the sense the respect part exists there now chartered accountancy <coughs> also come up with <coughs> some alarms also what are the alarms chartered accountancy you cannot do it the way probably you think of doing mbcom or similar qualifications it requires a lot of commitment you need to ensure that at least 14 hours 15 hours of study is required for chartered accountancy in chartered accountancy there are three stages one is foundation level then you have intermediate level and then you are final level of course after bcom there is a direct route but since you are plus 2 students you have foundation inter and final now each of its level has its own fund foundation level is relatively easier you will be able to crack without much challenge but at higher level it is i, I would say world's second toughest qualification it is said, said that world's second toughest qualification okay it's 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 a, it is true that it is it is tough because you have a group system in the sense there are intermediate level you have two groups so you cleared all the parts but you didn't get aggregate you have to write the entire group you got every paper you have very high marks but uh, you lost in some papers you have to write so all these things and the passing percentage it's a very competitive exam average passing percentage ra ra ranges between 5 to 10 percentage so out of 100 people only 10 people get through it so chartered accountancy you know while having its recognition is also one of the toughest qualification to crack it definitely you will be able to do it provided you commit yourself for it so we used to say that it is like a tabas you know when you are doing ca it is like a tabas you know tabas you you know no you go to a hilly area or uh, you know you you go to a forest area and all and the effective meaning is that when you are getting into ca you are slightly getting isolated with the social community because you cannot afford to spend time on anything else i said average time a ca student studies is around 14 hours when it comes to the higher levels so if you study that definitely chartered accountancy is your cup of tea and definitely that that really helps you to settle a career you can have n number of opportunities uh, once you complete chartered accountancy okay including in uh, middle east also places like qatar have lot of opportunities for cas now uh, so that was the first part there are other indian qualifications like cost and management accountants which is also earlier days it was called as icwa and another is company secretary cs personally i am not a very great advocate of cwa or cs couple of reasons one is cwa it is more dealing with cost and management wherein it would have more relevance when it comes to a manufacturing segment but otherwise you when it compare to ca ca have the practicing options and then more opportunities for ca and the effort required is more or less same so i i took it ca more than cwa i'm not i'm not uh, you know undercoating uh, cwa's value a comparison if you say i would say uh, cm uh, you know chartered accountancy have little upper edge compared to cwa's similar way company secretary not a bad qualification but again it is a very fine tuned qualification you will be more focused towards a company secretary you know you will be making the board minutes you may be you know part of the uh, ip uh, ipos and you know related stuff so it will be a, it is more of a fine tuned one so if you're thinking about moving towards a cfo level director finance probably chartered accountancy is better compared to the other uh, qualifications in my view now thankfully you know so over the time you know i understand all of you are indian students so at some point of time you may think of coming back to india also probably so i would i would quote uh, you know indian context of employment as well because today unlike early days you know when i qualified and uh, came to industry chartered accountancy was the whole or chartered accountancy and cost and cma was a whole uh, important qualification which has uh, job opportunities as finance professional but today the situation has changed today in india you know whole lot of multinational companies and they started looking out for their own professionals okay so when i say about a company like like say accenture or a company like ibm hp amazon so they are not particularly looking for only cas so they look out for us equivalent cas which is known as certified public accountant cpa cpa usa then they started looking out for cma usa certified management accountant 
they started looking out for CFA, Certified Financial Analyst. So when these kind of qualifications started coming up, the job opportunities for these qualifications increased. As a result of which, thousands of students are moving to these kind of qualifications. CMA USA. You know, in fact, uh, you know, last 2019 we have around 1,250 students only doing CMA USA program. So that is a kind of movement which has happened to CMA USA in India. So what I will do is I will give insights about these qualifications also, so that you you get a fair clarity and you will have multiple options available ahead of you when you think about next qualifications. Okay, CMA USA is, uh, as I said, uh, it's a US-based qualification, which was established in 1990, almost 100 years back. Certification started in 1972. These are, there's a very important slide, few of the highlights if you look at. There are only two papers. You clear two papers, you are CMA USA. Online exams. How to write exams, everything will be guided. Online exams. Objective type, 75% is objective in nature, 25% is descriptive. Jan, Feb, May, June, September, October is the exam windows. You can choose the date, time, everything in, during this window. Passing percentage is really good. That is one plus point I have noticed. Around 45 to 50 percent of the people pass the exams. Now, a quick strategic comparison with Indian courses. Again, I'm not undercoating Indian qualification, but it is better to understand because some students are of the mindset that you know, sir, I cannot spend 14 hours, 15 students. Tell me something which can help you to secure a career. So, when you look at from that perspective, Indian courses generally take four to five years. This takes one year. 14 to 16 papers, sometimes 20 papers. For Indian courses, it takes two papers here. Global recognition. You know, you have a lot of opportunities in Qatar, place like Qatar for CMA USA, uh, you, across the globe, you know, because it's the US based qualification, US companies recommend it. Passing percentage, I already said. So you are thinking about settling abroad and all, you know, CMA USA would be a good qualification. You could think of it. The best part about it, you know, this qualification you can do along with graduation. That is a very important aspect, I would say. You can do along with graduation. See, the days are gone when you think out, okay, plus two is over. Let me do graduation. After graduation, let me do next. Those are old days. It's gone. Now it is about, it is a very competitive world. Immediately after plus two, you should start thinking about what is next in finance. You should be thinking about it. So when you look at that, CMA is a good choice. You could think about it and you could secure your career. Okay, there are career paths, if I said, at the age of 35, 36, you become a director of finance, CFO level, you know, with excellent salaries. These are few of the companies where, uh, you know, our own students got placed. All are global brands, as you could see, Goldman Sachs, Amazon, Caterpillar, Deloitte, KPMG. Just, just uh, put some brands just for your reference. In effect, I'm saying that once you complete this qualification, your career is secured. Thankfully, we have good results. There's a few testimonials. I'm skipping that. Not much relevant. We could produce good results for CMA USA over the time. We have, in fact, an evening batch runs from Qatar, you know, so not Qatar, uh, Middle East. A lot of students from Middle East, does around, at least around 75 students, does CMA through us uh, through this program. Anyways, so that was a first hand information. CMA USA is a safe qualification. You could think of it. The other qualification you could seriously think is certified public accountant, CPA USA. This is another excellent qualification. Like in India, chartered accountants have the signing power. In US, CPAs are the signing authority. Because US companies are spread across the globe, opportunities are more for CPA USAs. And I would say a brilliant course to settle your career. The only fact is that you will be able to do it only after your graduation. So generally, plus two students, when, I, when they approach to me, I say, generally, first you think of doing CMA along with your graduation, finish it off and then to move to CPA. That's the way I generally suggest. Because CPA also, after graduation, once you complete your, your uh, you know, recognition, uh, globally itself, you know, it goes into a different level, okay? Four papers, only four papers. Online exams, again, 60% is objective type, multiple choice and descriptive. And different papers are that I'm not getting into it. Uh, but, but I could say that uh, this is another qualification with one, one and a half years, you will be able to complete it just by clearing four papers and secure your career as a professional. You will be adding those names, you know, so-and-so CMA, so-and-so CPA, you know, that, that is a uh, recognition you will be getting it, okay? 
Now, another qualification, FRM, this is another brilliant qualification, I will call it, because today, uh, with pandemic, companies are struggling to analyze what is next. You know, they are not able to analyze the risk. The element of risk across industries, across individual lives are increasing. You know, they are not, we are not able to predict future. You know, it's a reality. So financial risk management is a qualification which, you know, deals more about risk management. A professional qualification which helps uh, professionals to understand what is the risk, proactiveness to risk, risk, pro, uh, you know, uh, backup plans, all these things are possible with FRM. So I would say another qualification you could think seriously along with your graduation. Only two papers, 100% objective, online exams, and all those features. Again, a US based qualification. Okay. Papers, I'm not going much into details of it, but uh, I would say relatively easier papers, I can say. Now, another very important qualification, very relevant qualification for you is to think us, is you would have heard also, Association of Chartered Certified Accountants. You know, this particular body was established very long back, as a result of which the demand for ACC over the time has increased a lot. So there are 13 papers you need to crack, but along with graduation after plus two, students could think seriously about doing ACCA. One after another papers, you will be able to do it. And within a span of two years, two and a half years, you will be able to complete. Because it's a UK qualification and having, you know, um, you know, established long back, there are a lot of opportunities across the globe for ACCA, okay? So uh, I'm not, again, I'm not going much into the details of it, but uh, after plus two, you will be able to do this uh, is what I could say. There are different levels like fundamental, skill level, advanced level, like that there are different levels are there, okay? So there are other qualifications like CAMA, CFA, if, uh, uh, you know, then there are IFRS programs, you know, like, like that CPA Australia, like that there are a whole lot of qualifications we provide under my logic brand. Uh, I'm not going into those qualifications because these are the four qualifications I thought uh, will be four or five qualifications I thought will be more relevant for you, will be will be apt for you immediately when you think about after graduation. So if you are a very studious, you are ready to spend 15 hours of study, everything, chartered accountancy, probably the best choice. If you are a person, you are not, okay, 15 hours, nay yoga, sir, you know, I want to maybe balance out probably, but I can spend some quality six, eight hours then I would say CMA USA or ACCA, you should think about it along with your graduation. And after graduation, probably do as an additional qualification, CPA, FRM also, you could think about it. So these are a few of the qualifications I touched upon to ensure on the second part. Now, there is a quick highlight about, uh, brief about ourselves. I'm not going much into it. We're a 15 year old organization and uh, having our presence uh, uh, in India, uh, particularly we have uh, Bangalore, uh, Mumbai and Malaysia, we have a branch and uh, thankfully we are part of various awards and recognition. I'll give my number as well at the session. Now, uh, another another point, um, what I thought to highlight is, so if you if you look at the flow of our discussion, so if, I, if you uh, analyze it, see the first part of discussion, I was trying to highlight about uh, the significance of technological changes, wherein we discussed about artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, robotics, all these things are coming to, you know, all these are coming and the changes which is going to happen, all these things we were highlighting. You know, you have to be adapting to that change. You know, we, we, are, we have to move on with. The second part of our discussion, I was highlighting about the importance of being professionals. Because whatever technological changes coming up, if you are a finance professional, you will be controlling those technological changes. This particular video will highlight you how you will control, uh, you know, the technology. You can see very interesting video. Thirty seconds. Quickly, you can see. Yep, it's true. The audit. Robots have entered the world of accounting. The forecast. But if you're a certified management accountant, you're not worried. The risk assessment. You'll still set the strategy, and you'll still make the decisions. <clears throat> Sorry. I was just keeping your seat warm. Because you won't be working for them. They'll be working for you. The CMA certification. So I think I think that is a self-explanatory uh, video. Uh, so to summarize, we as we discussed, um, you know, the whatever changes happen, 
you know, if you are updated, if you are professionally qualified in finance segment, then doesn't matter. You know, you will be able to catch up with uh, uh, whatever the changes. Uh, I think I think I'm done with the presentation. Uh, uh, we are on time, so now we have the choice for question answer session. See what I suggest: you can take a screenshot of this number as well as uh, you know my email ID. Uh, feel free, you know. So you know, uh, see if you ask me. This is my you know extreme passion for last 15 years. I'm you know doing this uh, counseling and seminar sessions. It's, it's it gives immense pleasure to you know pass on whatever uh, we understand to the youngsters because you are the guys you know the future uh, you know the future finance professionals or uh, you know so this this gives you you know you should read as an index of a book whatever I explained you should look it as an index of a book you should explore more uh, you know all these courses Google it you know I will connect you with the uh, right people you know in case if you want to understand about some qualifications all these things are possible. It's a completely voluntary support. Uh, it it's gives a lot of immense satisfaction when you see, you know, the students who gone through you getting into uh, bigger positions and earn you earns better than you. You know, that gives a lot of satisfaction. So, you know, that's that's the whole point. You can save the number. This is my WhatsApp number. You can WhatsApp me in case if you know sometimes it's difficult to catch me on. <laughs> okay. Uh, on on uh, uh, you know the uh, phone, so you can. Um, uh, connect me uh, on whatsapp anytime and um, so i think i think uh, i have done with the session now if you have any questions happy to address thank you mr vinod that was an amazing session i'm sure all of us learned a lot from that it was really enlightening really informative uh, students if you are if you have any questions do feel free to unmute yourselves and ask questions to mr vinod sandhani Okay. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm uh, Vaishak, um, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vinod Chandra. Like, the session is really fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I can say it is great. Uh, like, as you mentioned, the present day world is very competitive, very challenging. Whatever they do, unless they have a 100% commitment, and if they don't update themselves, definitely they cannot survive long. See, my, I have a very, uh, been, it's a very simple question. Sure, man. Uh, let's say before they do the pursue the chartered accountant, after right. if they do their BCom and MCom, whatever, if right. they work under an auditor as an in, I mean, to do an internship, uh, right. so do you think does it help them when they start their CA? So uh, in CA, there are two, uh, two ways we can move ahead, ma'am. So one is, uh, uh, you know, a student immediately after plus two, which we call it as a foundation route, okay? Immediately they can choose foundation route. So foundation, intermediate, and then they go for a final levels. The other model is direct model. So after, you know, they complete the graduation, as you say, you know, a graduate student coming up and doing foundation again, not relevant. So what they suggest is they can go directly to intermediate level, finish it off, and then go for the articleship training. You know, for a particular period, they have to go for under an articleship, uh, under a CA for particular, okay. I think uh, earlier it was three years. Now it is slightly reduced. So around that time, they have to go for uh, uh, articleship. And then they clear off the final papers and stuff. But given a choice uh, to youngsters uh, these days, particularly plus two students, I would suggest immediately after, if you are planning to do CA, I would recommend to do immediately after plus two for a few reasons. One is, you know, the it is it is in a, you are in a, you know, whatever said and done up to plus two, you are, your uh, way of preparations, way of study is little more, uh, I would say a level of seriousness is excess. Once you get into a graduation level, it gets, slightly mitigated you know so you, it's trying to be relaxed because i i was a uh, post graduate and after graduation i joined my ca so i really understand the you know the way we used to have graduation and coming back again and doing ca was all the more difficult okay so that is one point second is the age factor so when you say along with graduation you do it you are just finished off plus two and you are doing along with it you have you have the relaxation of age but after at the age of 20 you are starting a course like ca it will be a risky proposition because 
there is an uncertainty involved in it. So average time we say for chartered accountants is four years. So if everything goes well at the age of 24, you may be able to qualify. But if it extends, the more age you become, the pressure increases. And all the more important, all your friends will be doing after plus two itself. So, you know, you will be sitting along with plus two student doing CA, vis a vis you are after graduation. So from that perspective, those who are thinking of graduation, I mean, CA, I would say plus two along with after plus two, along with graduation, you can do CA. And trust me, once you are doing graduation, doing, uh, sorry, once you're doing CA, doing graduation is like writing exam with left hand, you know, that kind of knowledge level you'll be. I hope I answered that, ma'am. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. I think some internet uh, issues on ma'am's side. Okay. Yes, I hope good. I answered that, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I'm receiving a couple more questions. Uh, from the student side. Uh, so you have experience working in a company like uh, Hindustan Aeronautical and also in a French multinational uh, like Capgemini uh, that provides consulting services. Can you give a comparison of the work atmosphere of these places? Okay, good question. Okay, very good question. So see, um, after CA, I have a choice. Uh, I had a choice where, uh, you know, the Ministry of Defense has selected around 25 CAs. Okay, it was a campus recruitment. They send, it, uh, send us to, you know, institutes like IAM, like now for specialized training. And, um, you know, they, they took us and uh, my profile was very unique. Thankfully, I got the best of opportunity, I would say. I was into pricing of helicopters. Okay. So, you know, the uh, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited under Ministry of Defense has come up with a lot of helicopters like advanced light helicopter, uh, combat helicopter, I would say, advanced light helicopter light combat helicopter, light utility helicopter. So it is, it is a, it gives a lot of, you know, a, a patriotic feeling when you, you know, and I was part of all these projects when they, you know, from an approval stage, you know, when you send the approval to pricing to Ministry of Defense for approval, after that, when you do the project controlling of it, you know, all these, it is very, very passionate. You feel very patriotic, you know, when you go there, you know, the, you know, defense aircrafts flying, uh, you know, the, those are really amazing. Uh, experience very limited people got that opportunity at that point of time but a lot of engineers do get so if you are an engineer thinking of getting into uh, or an engineering aspirant getting into some uh, you know hardcore machine oriented companies hl would be one of the best company i would say because the, it is one of the complex machines you know the helicopters you know around 50000 components on it so it's a very complex so that's where, you know, it was a very unique experience pricing of it. You should understand end to end the process if you want to do the pricing. So I, I had a lot of exposure on uh, uh, those aspects with respect to Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and uh, really enjoyed. Only thing, you know, the, when, when it comes to public sector companies, it has its own challenges. You know, one, the, one is, a, you know, the pay scales, everything compared to uh, private companies for a chartered accountant. It's much, much uh, lower scale. So... That was probably one of the reasons I had to think of alternatives. Then Capgemini uh, given me an offer. It was a commercial head uh, for the, one of their accounts uh, globally. One of the leading accounts, uh, 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 probably you would have heard about Unilever. So I was handling the Unilever commercial finance. Very exciting role. I was handling uh, multiple regions, Latin America, China, Asia, Pacific. So we're in, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, the exposure wise, it is, Capgemini is a, it's like a pressure cooker. I could say that not just Capgemini, you know, any, any uh, private limited, private companies, you, you know, at Capgemini's level, I could say it as a pressure cooker, you know, the kind of pressure, it is KPA driven, you know, key performance indicators, SOP, standard operating practices, you know, from moving from conventional, uh, you know, a public sector company to private limited company was all the more challenging, but thankfully uh, uh, could get, get through that. But I would say the exposure what Capgemini given was amazing, where you have handling 64 countries across the globe and their commercial finance, very pressureful, but good exposure. So I would say uh, comparison wise, HAL gave a lot of, uh, you know, insight, satisfaction with respect to patriotism and, uh, you know, exposure into diversified the best of pricing and costing part of it. Uh, Cap Jiminy gave a global perspective and interacting with uh, leading clients and all those stuff. I hope I, I mean, it was more of a personalized experience, but I hope I could give some insights on it. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you for that answer. 
sir some students are asking about your personal account on uh, how you prepared for ca and how you recommend students prepare for ca good question so i think we may have to extend slightly more time if i start saying about my experience on ca studies but i would say uh, see the uh, you know uh, i don't know you know i i was not a very until graduate you know as i as i said you know uh, plus two never thought of ca after that um, gone for graduation graduation was on a lighter side i used to play cricket those days and uh, uh, so you know the it was it was a uh, you know cricket was the priority you know I, I, professional cricket i mean to say so after graduation it was i was thinking about uh, moving towards uh, you know cricket didn't have opportunities unlike these days so then thought of moving into professional studies and ca was the only choice i had of me and the toughest choice i would say thankfully the best part happened to me was that the intermediate level i could qualify in first attempt you know so that was give, given me some confidence you know so otherwise it would have been uh, 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 pretty tough okay so when i started i started in kuchin so that time you know in our batch there were around 13 uh, students you know 13 uh, articles in the articles we call that you know so after graduation it was article shape so 13 article students and all of them were toppers in their colleges okay so i was also topper in um, st albert's college if you know the college it's ernakulam uh, is one of the colleges so uh, so we were all toppers in different different colleges from in and outs of uh, ernakuchin okay but only except for one person everyone has taken multiple attempts i'm not saying how many attempts i have taken <laughs> but uh, you know i would say every student has taken multiple attempts to clear it doesn't mean that you know they were all bright students you know probably leave aside my case but all other students were top very focused ca i want to do ca you know that kind of aspiration but one thing in common in all of them including me was hard work part you know we were really hard working you know we for us ca was everything you know for 14 15 hours it was a literal tapas i could say that it was a literal tapas and and trust me if you are really committed if you are really focused if you are ready to put hard work and perseverance another important word i use is perseverance what is perseverance failures can happen but get up walk again get up walk again these days students have to learn that because what has happened is you know uh, as i said you know i don't want to get deeper into it it's time is time is isn't but you know those days you know the finance is a constraint you know you have all the challenges in the world okay so you have you have to qualify you have the family responsibility coming up all these challenges are there but i would say you have to accept failures not necessarily that every time first time you will qualify and and please take this whether do you do ca or any other qualification students see failures are part of life you know you should take it as two sides of a coins you know so uh, it's 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 part of very much part of life the moment you you know unless you have failures you will not enjoy the success so ca we could enjoy the success today probably i would have mentored more than 10000 students over last 15 years and i would say the only reason why i am able to pass on the knowledge because of my failures in ca okay otherwise if i was you know probably the first at time maybe i would have gone into some company settled there and you know but today i i feel a lot of empathy on the other side and i am able to understand the failures of the other side and you know really supplement on that so my point is failures are part of life so you should you have to accept that as part of your life and two sides of a coin if you are hard working if you are focused and then the result you need to start dreaming you know one of the common things we say when we go for ca is start dreaming start dreaming about one day you will have the success coming up every day see in 2000 uh three early days you know i used to start dreaming of what i you know doing a ca and what happened everything trust me you know every day i used to dream it and 2005 i have seen it virtually seen it everything in reality again positive of time i am moving on but uh, what i am trying to say is that few of these aspects start dreaming hard work work hard you know there is you know you should convince yourself that i have put my best effort then whatever failure comes up get up and you know move ahead see the spiritual uh, background so religion doesn't matter whichever religion you are the follow try to follow the spiritual part that will give you a lot of courage you know irrespective of the religion what you do that gives you a lot of lot of courage you know one thing probably that helped me to withstand some of the failures is thankfully the some uh, 
uh, connects and you know i used to pray regularly all these things used to help me out so i i would say you know if you if you focus on that then see is your cup of i hope i answered my shan yes sir wonderful answer that's really great advice it's very important for students to keep dreaming uh, while preparing for such uh, exams thank you sir so much that was a great uh, session wonderful session uh, if any other students have any other doubts uh, please feel free to unmute now we have any questions feel free these are opportunity you know? so you can treat me as a big brother any questions generally we say questions do not come in two scenarios right one is you understand everything then no questions the other is you didn't understand anything <laughs> then also no questions right <laughs> so i hope you hear it is a uh, more or less you understood right yes sir it was really informative Very i'm much. sure everyone got a lot of information yeah sure so uh, what you said is absolutely true sir perseverance if they have that they can do anything in life but what happens exactly. is nowadays the kids everything they will be on a silver platter so that's a problem yeah i <laughs> i uh, my message was the same man in fact yeah yeah <laughs> any questions students why shock any question from the no sir uh, no ma'am that's all sure so so what uh, maybe one more point i want to add on so you know i have given the number so you know not only from career perspective so when you you know any any point of time you know always talk to your teachers professors they are the people who understand you know other than parents you 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 should interact you have my number also any time you know if you are following ca or any other professional qualification you feel any any time just stuck with something you are emotionally down please take the number contact me i can i can say a few words of my experience that can you, you know maybe give some confidence so save my number any time any any it doesn't matter uh, you know where you do it but uh, you know that definitely i can i can uh, be uh, uh, you know uh, give my insights onto it at any point of time uh, that's it so i'm 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 done yeah. thank you thank you sir uh, thank you sir thanks for your uh, precious time you. uh, it was indeed an amazing session definitely now my commerce student definitely they know what exactly they should do once they finish their plus 2 so I mean you have given a complete details their career path what they can choose what they can pursue and how they should do it so thank you so much for your time thank you ma'am uh, in students, fact any more questions uh, ma'am can i just add on to something before we conclude yes okay yes ma'am ashak if there are no questions can we end the show uh, yes ma'am i would just like to say something uh, before we finish up please 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 uh, so students as you all know tomorrow we have miss leela shaju coming uh, talking about the defense sector so please you don't miss this uh, miss the tomorrow session it will be really informative like today's i'm sure everyone will enjoy uh, tomorrow session uh, as you all know defense is a is a pretty big field and so you have to get people from there as well so please do join uh once again a big uh, hearty uh, thank you to mr vinod chandran uh, for joining us here today it was really informative thank you sir a big round thank of you thank you uh, uh, principal thank you, thank you principal ma'am uh, assistant principal and uh, you know every faculty and students members uh, for patiently listening thanks special thanks to vaishak menon for coordinating he was coordinating with me throughout uh, you know for last one week so thanks to you vaishak uh, thank you everyone so uh, do well in your career wherever you are give your best uh, you know and and success will be yours all the very best god bless you thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.